two, one. Hey guys, what's up? Christian here, and before I will start tying the fly, um, I want to make an announcement. Um, this may be the last video I'm going to be doing for a while now. Um, it's um today is actually going to be the f before. This is today is the day before the first day of school, so I'm gonna want to try to do good this year, and, um, I won't be able to make as many, like, I've been making a lot of videos very frequently, it's been summer, and, um, so, yeah, I'm gonna, it's gonna be much harder to make videos now, so, yeah, so, yeah, we'll expect them to come out once every week, hopefully we can get that fast, um, probably, I'm, I'm gonna try to shoot for once every week, so, yeah, just keep that in mind. Alright, anyway, let's get to the fly, so, the fly we'll be tying today is a Prince Nymph. Now, this fly is, um, this is the first Prince Nymph I have ever tied, ever, and this one that I'm gonna tie today is gonna be my third. So, anyways, you can see these little weird tails, this tail and this wing case here. It looks really weird, doesn't it? Well, it is. So, this t this tail and the wing case. Um, well, the materials look weird. Um, I kind of messed up on this tail. It's kind of tied it. I tied it in too low on the hook. I tied it in at the bend. So yeah, that's why it's bending down. But these, the both the tail and the wing case are made of goose buyouts pair of goose buyouts, so, I've never used goose buyouts before, they're very good, this pattern, apparent, this pattern is very good, I know that for a fact, um, my dad caught it, um, my dad has caught only three trout before, one of them he kept, and it was pretty big, it had to be like a foot long at least, we haven't caught much trout, so, yeah, it looked big to me. But the rest of them, but he caught all three of them on Prince Nymphs. And he had much more bites, too, on that same day that he caught that trout. So, anyways, yeah, um, let's start on this. So, the thread I'm going to be using is, you can't see the label on it, I ripped it off, because it was in the way of the bobbin clasps. But anyway, so, um, this thread is actually a 6 aught thread. This is from Spirit River. I got, actually... Funny story on how I got all this, goose buyouts and stuff. I went up camping last weekend, right? And on the way there, we stopped at an L.L. Bean outlet. And, um, they had, like, so we just stopped just to see what they had. Just, like, pick up leaders, that stuff. Because we were going fishing. But anyways, um, they had this kit, right, to tie the prince nymph. So I got all this stuff. I got the goose buyouts. It came with a thread. And the sad thing is that it came with the hackles, but these hackles are really weird, but they work well. I mean, they're long, but they have little tiny fibers, and I don't know where it comes from. So, I don't know if it's like a saddle hackle, because my saddle hackles, like here's an example of my saddle hackles that I have. They're pretty, they're, they're pretty long. Ooh, this one's like a badger. Yeah, see? It's a clear badger hackle. Anyway, so these are pretty long, they have long fibers as well, but these are, like, ridiculously long and have short fibers, so please leave in the comments what kind of hackle you think it is. I'm so sorry that I don't know, I can't give you any more information, but you can use neck hackle for this as well, like, um, if you have, like, any dry fly hackle from, like, a Goddard caddis that you tie. So, yeah, I noticed that's my most popular video to date, so, yeah try to top it. So anyways, we're going to start the thread off at the... No, we're not going to start the thread off. I am so sorry. I forgot to name all the materials. So, we need a pair of brown and white goose fly off. So, let me just pick up the brown here and the white. So, here are the goose fly offs. They feel really weird. Like, it's from goose. I don't know what part of the goose feather it's from. If it is part of the feather at all. But I don't know what part it is from, so. Yeah. Anyway, so then, as I've already shown you, we're going to need hackle. I don't know what kind, I'm so sorry. You can use redneck hackle as well. 
And then this came in the package as well, just some gold tinsel, generic gold tinsel. And then we're also going to need peacock curl. So yeah, I'm happy I've stocked my peacock curl with this. So yeah. And also we're going to need some lead wire, which we're going to which we're gonna put on right now. So. A few wraps. I'm just before the bend of the hook. Make some wraps. To about an eye length. Helicopter that off. You can also cut it off if you wish, but this just brings it closer. There you go. So now we're going to use that. Now we're going to start our thread base. And once we get to the lead wraps, hold the lead wraps in place, and then bring your thread on top of the lead wraps and then try your best to bring them to the back as soon as possible so then once you bring it to the back then make several wraps in the back of the lead wraps so that it makes like a tape so that it makes a taper now bring the thread back forward vice is moving everywhere now do the same it's in the front only reverse so now bring your thread back to the bend of the hook and just cut it off. Wrap that tag down. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our goose by our brown goose biots. We're gonna take a pair of them. Now here's a little tip. I'm gonna take these from the front of the goose biots. If you take it from the back, it makes it all floppy and stuff, so it just is just a good way. So we're just gonna go snip two off at a time. Actually, since they're from the front, we can just break it off. No, we can't, so we're gonna have to cut them. Goose by its fill. We'll just this then here. So now what we're gonna do is gonna put one of them down. Make sure you don't lose it. These are sticky. No, it fell. Great. That's not it. Okay, so we have one, so that should be fine. So what we're going to do is, you see how this is naturally curving? So what we're going to do is we're going to place this on the side nearest to you. So measure it, make it at least one hook shank in length. To make sure the concave side is facing you. Oh! What do you know? They're both here. They both fell together. How sweet. Oh, they're still connected. That's why they weren't coming. Okay. Let's so break those apart. So then, concave side facing you. Keep messing up on this. Um, let me remind you guys that I this is a sec this is gonna be the third pin snip that I've ever tied. So I'm sorry if I keep messing it up for those who know how to tie it. So now I'm gonna measure it out so that the tips align. And tie that in at the same point. Then there you have the tail. So now what you can do I've whenever I see people tie the fly, um what they do is they tie down the all the goose biots on top of the lead wraps, and that just helps to cover up the lead wraps. Okay, so we have the top of the lead wraps all covered up. All right, so oops. All right. 
So now we're going to tie in our tail. So we have one long peacock curl. And we're going to take another long one. So take those two. And then line them up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to Try to tie it in on the bottom. And once you have that, tie it completely down. So then that just covers up the entire hook shank. That just covers up the entire leg wraps. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our tinsel. We're going to want a bunch of it. This tinsel is pretty weird. So you're going to want one that's about four or five inches long. Long one. Okay, so now this tinsel is kind of unraveling. So we're just going to tie it in at the point where it's not unraveling. Tie that all down. And then cut off the peacock curl because I completely forgot about that. And the tinsel, I'll cut those off close. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the peacock curl, roll it, make like a rope, one complete wrap in the back, then make wraps butting up, one wrap butting up against the next, which wrap forward, so bring your thread to where you want your, to a little bit before, after where you, you want your head to be, by this face, to make the hackle and stuff. Okay, so there, ooh, what was that? My th vice just completely got messed up. So, make sure you cross your thread several times, because peacock curl can easily slip on you. You have no idea. You just tie that all down. Cut it off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a wrap our tinsel. Just palm it forward. And then tie that down. So anyways, I got some really nice comments. I've been reading all the comments. Thank you guys for all the really nice comments. They've made me very happy. So, yeah. Alright, you know, I think what I'm going to do, if I get, like, 50 subscribers, we'll say, I'll make a video, on the, and I'll read all the comments that you guys have made. Yeah, can't wait. It's 50 people who just sit down every single day and watch, put up through all my talking and watch my videos. I love the idea of that. Whoops. I want it, so I snipped off two loose biots. Okay. So there we have them. So we'll put these aside for now, and now we're going to take one of our hackles, our ridiculously long ones, and then tie it in. 
and tie down as much of it as you can. So as my friend is gone, he is moving to Australia, that's why you've been sitting in my videos a lot. So, so then I wrap the hackle a few times, just make it a bit bushy. Tie it off. Try not to trap too many hackle fibers in the process. And then once you just secure so and once you've secured it. Probably make sure that everything is clear from the eye of the hook. So. So. So, yeah, here we go. Snip that off. I'm just gonna trim off these little stragglers here. Now wrap it down. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to cut off some of the fibers on the top. So that makes a better I heard a door slam really hard. Makes a little better base for the for the um, goose biots. Now we're almost finished. All we just need is the goose biots. Now we're gonna take the out. You see the natural curve there. We're gonna take that natural curve so it curves down. And then what we do is lay it across the shank of the hook. I'll show you what I mean once I tie it down, and then tie it down. Not messed up. The goose bites are very hard to get a hold of with thread. Either that or it's just me. Okay. So make that lie across the shank of the hook. Now you're going to want to measure it so that it extends just beyond the base of the tail. Let me just show you guys. Top. If I can find it. Okay, there we go. So, here we have... See how it's laying across the shank of the hook? There. Got a little... Uh, feathers on you. Okay, so, um... Now, now we're gonna lay that outward. Make sure it outward curve down, and now lay it across the shank of the hook on the opposite side. So that makes like a narrow X. Tie that in. Cut that off. And tie that down. Okay, and then you have the head already pretty much made. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our rip finish tool. And I just had it, I was just tying another fly for you guys. So then take our whip finisher. Several turns. Tighten it up. Ooh, I don't know if I, I don't know if I said what the thread type it was. This is Spirit River thread in six odd. So, yeah. So, pop that out of the vise. And then one of the goose biots I think fell off. No, it didn't. I just suck. But anyways, here you have it. A prince nymph. And these flies, these are outstanding flies. And so, yeah, I'm going to just test them out sometime.
I probably won't be able to make a video on it. So, yeah, just remember that I probably won't be able to make many videos as frequently as I have been. Because for a few reasons about school and the fact that I am running out of patterns to tie. So, and I only know a few patterns that I can tie and um, a lot of these patterns I have to like improvise on stuff. So, yeah. Anyways guys, hope you guys like this video. Um, and subscribe, like, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye!